Hey everyone, welcome back to Gardner Holgate Auction Rooms in Caution, Wiltshire, UK. We're back with another consignment update. We've had lots and lots of stuff in. Um, I think over 300 lots just this week alone. Um, so we're going to have a look through um, some of the some choice pieces from the things that we've had in, um, some lovely collections that have come in. I think today the focus is going to be rarities. Um, so we're going to see some things that you won't often see. There's even some makers that I hadn't even heard of when I initially got the inquiry for these things. Um, and yeah, I think a lot of you will enjoy what we got coming up. Um, as usual, comment if you uh, if there's anything you particularly like um, or any misinformation that I give, um, do comment and correct us. But um, yeah, we're going to have a look through, a brief look, uh, preview website guitarauctions.com. Um, we'll do another batch today of um, things that have come in. One thing to bear in mind is we are probably 800 lots short of what we actually have on that website. So um, one question I always get, I, mean, I had an email earlier this week that said, looks like you've got a very small sale this time. <laughs> it's not true. It's not a very small sale. It's a very big sale. Um, and it's just, it's only a preview website. The full catalogue always goes online three weeks prior to the auction. So we do have, I think, nearly 500 guitars. But anyway... I'm waffling as I always do in these intros and we will get straight into it. We're actually going to start with some pedals because we've had an amazing collection of pedals in. So we're going to head on over and I'll see you there in a sec. So here we have a incredible collection of pedals. These are pretty much, apart from these two, these are all from one single owner. Um, a lovely chap from Northern Ireland. He actually flew over with all these pedals um, in carry-on luggage. Um, it was quite something, but he did it. And there are some incredible things here. There's some things that I've not seen before. Um, and I think we'll just briefly look over. There's a lot of, most of the Boss pedals here are Boss Japan, so 80s Boss Japan. But there are some amazing things. I mean, this is one of the rarest Boss pedals. You can get the Slow Gear SG-1. Um, really, really cool effect. Um, and it's kind of like a, a rolling, it's, it gives the sound of a rolling off of the volume. Um, and you can obviously change the, um, change the speed of that. Um, and and um, I guess what it says there, the attack. So um, yeah, it's a really interesting one. Loads of videos online of uh, sound clips, um, but that an incredibly rare boss pedal. Um, and there's some other ones that we just don't, don't see that often. You know, the LM2 limiter. Don't see many of those. Um, it's seen better days, but um, it's a rare thing, and it's been used. Missing a missing a knob there. Um, the Spectrum SP1. I've never seen one of these before. These are more rare than the SG. There we go. My man says they are more rare than the the SG. So. So I believe anyway. Yeah. So we believe. Tell us if we're wrong. But um, never had one of these in. Um, I've always heard about them. Um, obviously, we've got the Dimension C that um, Boss. The Wazacraft reissues, but that's one of the originals, Japanese blue labels. Um, and the dynamic filter, that's another that's another lesser spotted pedal. And the Tiwa as well. You don't don't see them come up, up that often. So you can see we got a really good good selection. And I can't not mention everyone's favourite, the HM2, which I actually like, but I'm probably in a very small pool of people. Um, so yeah, we've got um, other pedals from this collection. Um, we've seen a few of these with us in the last year. We've got a Vox Tone Bender. Um, these are these are selling for really strong prices now. Um, so that's a, I believe that's a, a slightly later '60s one. Um, we got the the Super Phase. That's another one you don't see that often. And of course the FA1 FET amplifier. Um, but as you saw the Vox. It's not just Boss. There's um, yeah, some 70s electro harmonics, pedals, electric mi mistress, uh, the zipper, envelope follower there. And then 
no cell would be complete without a tube screamer so we have a TS-808 and a TS-9 so very very collectible these days not quite as good as a Digitech bad monkey but uh, <laughs> I'm only saying that because I have one and my uh, my pocket will never stretch to the um, the heady heights the heady heights not necessarily my pocket not stretching but I warranting when the the bad monkey does what I need it to do and I play with a lot of overdrive hiding hiding all my sins so um I thought this is quite cool original box we even got the original battery I mean not that the battery's going to be much good these days but uh, from a collector's point of view we've got all the papers in there as well um, that's the linear power booster we've seen a few of those over the years um, just briefly going back to boss we've got the vt1 this is another rare thing um voice transformer make yourself sound like a robot um and very collectible again the boss chorus ensemble there so that's another nice example um all these currently in our store waiting to be photographed by our team and then a, of course a graphic equalizer as well the ge10 that's like the first pedal they ever made right is yeah, it is. Early? It is very early. Yeah, um, and then going away from um, boss again, we got that is the original box that suffered damage over the years. So it's been taped. We got a deluxe memory man, another cool thing. Cameraman just getting in there, um, and then we got some love tone pedals. So we have a meatball. So these are again very collectible. And probably one of the most well-known love tone pedals, the big cheese. And then again, electro, electro harmonics, we've got the Ram's Head Big Muff. So again, a, a rare version of the Big Muff. So you can see some great things coming up in the pedal section. And um, we've got a couple of the, the, dry, the Marshalls that have been re very recently reissued, um, Drive Master, Shred Master, and the Governor. Um, so yeah, do look out for them. They're on day two of the auction, um, which will be on the 6th of September. So day two, we have pedals along with amps and part two guitars. So the, like, the lesser value guitars with the amps and pedals. Now we've covered the pedals, we will get onto guitars, which I'm sure most of you are here for. So we are having a look at what I think is one of the coolest things I've had in. An original case, there's the badge there, Maton, Maton, Maton we'll go for. Um, well, there we go, mid-60s, so this is a DC545 and it's in amazing condition, nice playing original condition. Um, so Australian made probably the most well-known maker um, in Australia um, but really really interesting guitar nice lightweight um, fully hollow body so um, at louder volumes you might need to watch out for that but um, yeah I, I really like the the pickup selector switch that's just here um, and this is all fully working um, Maton use um, they use woods that are native to um, Australia as well so um, you know this will be some kind of Australian maple um, small ding there but otherwise you've just got lacquer checking um, as you would expect for a guitar of this age bolt on neck um, the board although it looks rosewood it's probably Australian black bean I think is what they used um, how I know that I don't know but um, Australian black bean, um, probably from previous research for all these guitars. But yeah, no, it's, a, it's a really, really cool thing. Um, and if you like that hollow body 3-3, three, three, well, I guess it's a 3-3-0 three, three, oh type of thing, being the fully hollow body, um, then this could be a, a good one for your collection. Like I said, it's a, it's a good sounding guitar. It plays well. It's got its original case. So... Uh, and they don't they really they really don't break the bank um you know you can occasionally get these for under a thousand pounds so obviously i don't know your budgets but um yeah a really really nice thing a little bit similar to the last guitar being hollow body and red 
Um, but this is a Fender Coronado 2, two pickups. Um, 1966, this one. And it is again in in reasonably good condition. Um, the fretboard, I've been made aware, has been has been shaved down slightly. Um, it was basically to remedy to remedy a, a twist in the neck, which is no longer there. So um, the neck is now fine. Um, but it's a, it is a nice example. The main issue really with it is one of the pickups isn't currently working, but it's very likely to be a simple fix. The um, the seller, it was working when he put it in the case, and then when he took it out of the case in preparation to bring it down to us, it wasn't working. So there'll be something simple going on there, um, which I'm sure to the trained will be able to do it efficiently and well. Um, but there we go, original tuners, nice thing. It doesn't have an original case, but a nice mid-60s fender. So we have something British made, um, good friends of ours as well actually, the, um, the makers. There we go, crimson. It's a really nice crimson guitar, and this is their Descendant model. Um, I believe this is um, this is one of the, I guess, custom shop spec ones. Um, but you know, very very crimson, using very very nice, um, nice figured or highly figured unusual woods, um, and known Ben for a very very long time Ben Crow um, incredible maker he's got a great team there and they make a stunning guitar so if British guitars are your thing um, this is a good really really nice example we've got the bird top there that's just lovely and I just love the love the fact that they really show off um, show off you know knots in the wood and um, you know use use sort of flat finishes there we go, we've got some lovely panels, the wooden panels on the back, and it just works. It's a really, really nice, good quality guitar. Very clean guitar. Very clean guitar. So clean. From our friends at Crimson. So we've got an acoustic guitar here, and we have quite a few Collings in this cell. Um, so this is another stunning Collings down tuned at the moment so I'm not going to give it a strum um, but this is a 001H uh, mahogany so all mahogany really really nice well made all Collings guitars are well made I, I, I can't recall ever coming across a bad one um, just very very consistent um, yeah another great thing And this is one that's come from a deceased estate collection. Um, again, with the with the crimson guitar as well. So we're we're going to be going through a few of the guitars from this collection just because they're nice and different. Another thing you won't see that often. Um, another very well regarded uh, maker of acoustic guitars. This being McPherson. So there we go. So this is the MG 3.5 model. And they've got their own sort of design with the with the upper upper sound hole, um, but this has got this is obviously the previous owner's notes here. Um, looks like song song sheets. Um, yeah, interesting. Um, but Madagascan rosewood looks very much like Brazilian. Um, very similar wood. Although Madagascan is legal to sell without certification, um, so yeah, a lovely, lovely example. There's a there's a few minor dings. Um, it was a it was a gigged guitar, um, hence you can see the notes on the back. Um, but yeah, a really really good guitar, original case. It's been well looked after, and again something very very different. So in here, this is. I before doing the valuation, I'd never heard of this maker. 
Um, so we've got GMC guitars, and you can't find an awful lot of information about them. Um, so they're based in Switzerland, incredible quality. I mean, just phenomenal. Um, so this was made in 2007. This is just called um, a, it, it's just a custom, um, a custom, custom hollow body. That's, that's all the model designation is. So um, it was made, it was made specifically for the owner, um, unfortunately now no longer with us. Um, but this body is, this is um, Santos Rosewood, not to be confused again with Brazilian Rosewood. So the more common name for Sa uh, Santos Rosewood that most of us know is Pal Ferro. Um, Fender went to using it on their on their fretboards with the whole um, Rosewood saga back in 2017. Um, so Pal Ferro is Rosewood. Um, Santos Rosewood, another name for it. Um, I think Bolivian Rosewood, some people call it as well, but very, very similar looking wood to Brazilian. Um, you get these um, really black streaks through it. Um, a, a bit straighter grain though, but you do get, um, you know, this has actually been really nicely bookmatched, this two piece back. And again on the top, two piece top. Um, these are Seymour Duncan mini humbuckers. They were they've been custom made specially, especially for this guitar or for the for the manufacturer to put in these these guitars. And it's an amazing thing. This guitar, I believe, or I'm led to believe, was about six thousand pounds, the equivalent of new. So, um, very very high end boutique. And yeah, it's a it's a lovely thing. Just look at it. So again. This is the same maker, but this is an electric, and it looks like we have a string off, so we'll ignore that. Um, there is one bit of damage on this guitar. There's this um, this bridge cover that, um, yeah, it was it was rattling around in the case when it came in, but it is it is loose. So we'll be careful of that while we're handling it. So this is the live coals solid body the live coals name comes from the type of finish they use i think it's it's meant to um it's meant to give the impression of hot live coal. coals yeah <laughs> live coals so um it's a really nice weight electric um seymour duncan humbuckers again a shallow um shallow bridge good quality bridge really nice flame maple neck Obviously got a string dangling around there. I'll try not to poke our cameraman's eye out. So the, the, the finish is called Live Coals, as I've as I've mentioned from the same owner. And I believe this guitar came in at about five thousand. Uh, you know, the previous one I said six thousand, so very expensive guitar to have commissioned. Um, and now on the open competitive market. So here we have a really really lovely Sadowski hollow body this is the Jimmy Bruno signature made in 2007 and it's just it's just a good good jazz guitar again this is all from the same same collector um these um it's always a it's one of those things whether to take these things off because you know they came in as the seller as the seller gave them to us but you know we'll take them off um but yeah, nicely, nicely flame maple, Jimmy Bruno model, um, so a known model, but again, a, a, a rarer thing that you don't see often coming, at, coming up in the auctions. And it's again, another good quality guitar. And yeah, made in, made in USA. Here we have a bit of local interest. So this is a Kincaid Brothers wood spring acoustic now king k brothers are from bristol so not far from us at all um stunning maple back and sides yeah mahogany neck but a really nice lightweight really bright sounding acoustic oh, lovely so yeah local interest king k brothers they make 
they make an amazing guitar um, and again local interest I love how the the heel there is quite doesn't sit very high so it sort of tapers down quite nicely um, but again a well-made guitar from a local maker and lesser seen so here we're going to have another lesser spotted arch top and look at that that is eccentric this is a pagelli oh, yeah. again another swiss maker from the same collection as the jmc's but this is a again a, a custom a custom made thing for the owner and again lovely lovely woods used really interesting design yeah it's like a piece of modern art isn't yeah, it? again really lightweight it is like a piece of modern art down tuned at the moment for transportation um but yeah no a really good condition um very different eccentric design and they are collectible as well guitars from this maker because of the low output There we go, exotic guitars. Really, really nice high-end S-type and T-type guitars is, is what they mainly do. Um, but with really good high-end components. Look at that neck, flaming on that. This is, this is an early serial number as well, serial number 99. Um, but you've got the aged, aged white finish. Um, which has been it's been factory aged as well, so you've got some light checking. And good pickups as well. I I can't actually quite remember. They're either they're either Freelins or Lollars. I'm gonna say they're probably Lollars. Um but good good pickups. Um and yeah, again a really nice boutique um high end US maker. And we don't see them that often. So another, not necessarily a rare guitar, but a rarity for the auctions. And this is the XSC2 model. It's a nice thing. So we saw a lovely um, national Julian resonator last week. So here we have a slightly more modern National Resophonic Resonator. So this is the Bendaway model um, from 1997. Um, sort of green burst back and natural top. Um, but a really, really nice, cool looking resonator. Does the resonator thing so as it loud. should. <laughs> so very, loud. It is very loud. Um, but yeah, nice modern National Resonator. And the new prices for Nationals are are really high at the moment so um yeah no good a good opportunity to get one on the used market um so that is the bendaway model from 1997 here we have something american and vintage and i love them so this is a 1961 guild x175 and it's a lovely example so you've got the um original franz pickups these are these are a really nice set of pickups. Um, they're quite um, they give a nice, I guess, open, creamy sound. There's a few imperfections to the back, but a really, really nice, really nice original example. Um, there are two knobs that have been changed. There, I've just said an original example, but two knobs changed. But otherwise, it's all there. And yeah, lovely thing with the Franz pickups that sound fantastic. So I mentioned last week about really weird coincidences. So the weird coincidence of this is, so one thing, I've never had a old micro frets before. So this is the Wanderer model. I and mean, it's got this um, active module in there, which we don't actually know whether it works, um, but the, the main electrics do. So interesting, unusual, rare guitar, Microfets Wanderer. 
but the coincidence is I posted this on our Instagram feed or no it wasn't I posted it on his Instagram feed it came in and on the day it came in there's a, uh, a, a known dealer called Imperial Vintage in the States and they posted on Instagram a blog all about micro frets guitars and I just thought that was really weird the first vintage one I get in and then uh, a well-known dealer in the States posts a blog about them but um yeah I, look at the video last week where I mentioned another spooky coincidence but um yeah and we've got another one yet to come so we'll have a look at that in a minute but uh, a cool different thing they are quite weighty um but yeah interesting and they play quite well the whole microfets thing was this whole um nut system here where you can adjust the nut to perfect the intonation hence the name micro frets so all of you will probably guess what this is from the case it is a gretch and this is a double anniversary from 62 so it's a it's a used but good honest example um, the pickups these are TV Jones pickups we do have the originals in the case and this is a replaced guard and we also have the original um, but we've got the original case um, the tuners are uh, later replacements and we do not have the originals uh, quite a bit of wear on the neck but um, yeah it's a good a good up together good playing Gretsch it's had it has had a refret so um, nice big frets actually not in tune but that's not my fault <laughs> I haven't photographed this yet <laughs> not the photographer's fault putting all the tuners straight but yeah um, good guitar for you Gretsch collectors here we have another old American guitar from the 1930s this is an epiphone zenith so master built zenith from roughly 35 um, so it's a considering the age it's it's not doing too badly but it's a nice original example i mean you probably won't pick it up on the camera but the the brazilian rosewood green there is lovely on the fretboard really dark board um, but yeah a nice American mid 30s archtop guitar this is another cool British guitar um, a Vanquish this is a Vanquish legend with P90s really nicely made and this thing sounds phenomenal when I plugged it in it just those P90s with the with the solid body, solid block of mahogany there with through neck, just sounds great. And all the detailing with the with the position markers for the controls, and I think it's a really smart guitar. There we go, a Vanquish legend with P90s, another good British maker. Sticking with the British theme, and one of the best makers best luthiers that England or Britain has ever had the pleasure this is an Andy Manson um, the Dove model so really lovely arch top most of you will have heard of Andy Manson um, made stunning acoustics and arch tops this is from the 80s and it's a lovely thing, really nice Brazilian uh, Brazilian rosewood tailpiece and pick guard, which we do have certification for. So it comes complete with a CITES A10 certificate, as every guitar containing Brazilian rosewood should have when you are buying them. Um, but a really, really nice Manson Guitars Dove by Andrew Manson, um, based down in Devon. Lovely, lovely thing and collectible we're staying British and you're all jumping up and down saying Godin are not British they're Canadian or American whichever Canadian parts constructed in America is what they say but it's not it's a Patrick Eggle so again another British guitar 
This is the Berlin model, hardtail as well, so um, a preference of mine, hardtail guitars. I spend too much time concentrating on playing the guitar properly rather than playing around with whammy bars and pedals and things. But uh, <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> but really nice example from 1992. Um, aged, aged finish. It's used. There's buckle wear but it's not too bad, there's nothing, there's no major issues. Um, a good example of a Patrick Eggle Berlin from the early 90s with an incorrect case. Let's go Gibson. And here we have a 1977, which a lot of you will tell from the purple lined case, Gibson Melody Maker Double. So they reissued these in the late 70s and early 80s. I think 77 might be the first year that they reissued them. Um, so the double pickups have got the embossed covers. Now I've mentioned in previous videos about the um, the bad reputation that 70s, um, 70s guitars get, I guess, from Gibson and Fender. Now, there there is some, I guess, some truth to it, but I think there's there's more there's more good ones than bad ones generally but this as an example incredible guitar and we were discussing the other day that i find these much better quality than the 60s ones um so really good example it is well made it just works so if you like the melody maker thing then I haven't played or handled a 60s one that is um, that is better than this. So if you want a decent melody maker, get one of these. Um, I'm not just saying that because I'm selling it. Um, <laughs> I've got lots of guitars to sell, but um, you know, I think I think the general thing of these videos is we are picking out um, things that are good um, to show you in the videos. So I think. I say, oh, this is a good guitar quite a lot, but the fact is, it, it is, hence why it's in the video. So here we have another Gibson. So this is from the late 60s, and I cannot be much more precise than that for a few reasons. So as we know in this period, the serialization was all over the place, so we can't go on that. We've got replaced pickups, so we've got bare knuckle pickups in the bridge and in the neck, and also the pots have been changed. So the one, the one thing that you hope you're gonna your your last resort to date a guitar is going to be the um, is going to be the pots. So can't go by those. We do have the Orange Union made label. Now that was used from. Um, late 65 or early 66 through to the late 90s and then of course when you go into the 70s you transition to the small square purple and white label and it's got a skinny nut so at earliest it can be late 65 but I think it's probably around 66 one of the reasons I think that is because it's got an Indian rosewood board rather than a Brazilian board and I would imagine they were still using Brazilian boards even when the nut went thinner on 65 um, guitars I have I have seen Brazilian boards as late as 68 on Gibson's but um yeah that is an Indian board skinny nut union made label um, so I and also the tuner type as well so I would put it in the 66 to 69 range um, we've got a stinger on the back here, which is very unusual, and there is a there is a little um, little mark there. So whether there's some kind of repair that's gone on, um, that it doesn't see, look like there's anything drastic there. Um, the neck's fine up here, um, and we've got this um, what a lot of people refer to as the iced T finish. Got some very fine checking going on, but it's a cool player's grade thing. And can I say good guitar again in this video? I'm going to say it. It's a good guitar. There's more than one good guitar. There's more than one good, good, good guitar in the world. Um, Surely every guitar you own is a good guitar, right? 
yeah, I, d I do own some bad guitars, but I bought them for a reason I can't bear selling them, but um, or for sentimental reasons, but good guitar, good period, player's grade guitar. I'm not the biggest 335 fan, but if you're after a 335 and you're after a skinny nut, um, late 60s example, and the pickups are going to be good, they're bare knuckle, um, so um, yeah, this is a nice thing. So we've got a modern Gibson here, another 335, but it's a lefty, so one for the lefties. So this is why we're, I mean, it's a modern Gibson, so I did say we're going to cover more rare things, um, but I just think because it's a lefty. <laughs> it is rare. <laughs> it, it, it is rare, yeah. Lesser spotted, but this is a Gibson Memphis from, I can't quite remember now, 2007, it looks like, based on the serial number. Yeah, 2007. It's a lefty Memphis with the case. And it's a good example, nice clean example. So one for the lefties, because we don't have much lefty stock this time. So apologies for that, but we, we only sell what essentially gets consigned. So um, yeah. Fender. Now this is a rare thing, as it is limited edition with a genuine gold leaf finish. Got a few knocks to it, but this is the 1997 limited edition Will Ray uh, Jazzercaster. So a telecast of the Jazz Master picker type pickups with these big poles, um, Seymour Duncan. These were made by for this model. And then of course we've got the, the hip B bender. Um, as well. So this was, um, as you can see there, Helicaster. So this was uh, one of the three-part series of Helicaster guitars. So there was the Jerry Donahue one as well, which we've had a couple for in the past. But there we go, limited edition. I'm not actually entirely sure, or I haven't looked into it yet, how many were made, but I think it was a thousand or less. So not many made. Um, really cool gold leaf finish and this thing sounds massive um, with these big uh, I mean uh, you get these poles uh, similar poles to this in the Seymour Duncan Invader pickup that you of course get in the newly reissued Tom DeLong Strat my favorite guitar model ever so this isn't necessarily rare but the finish in Shearwood Green Metallic is less often seen. So this is a 87, 88 um, Fender American series. So known as the American series before they went to uh, American Standard later on. But this is a good clean example with the case and the tag. So Shearwood Green Metallic. And I don't think I've ever had a Shearwood Green Metallic Fender ever in a sale. So a nice, a nice addition to the Fender offerings. I said earlier about coincidences that keep happening. So we have another Fender in Sheward Green Metallic. These came in on the same day within an hour of each other and I had no idea what they were bringing. So another weird coincidence. So this is a Johnny Marr from 2015 Johnny Marr Signature Jaguar in Shearwood Green Metallic. So really strange, never had one before, or I never had a guitar before in Shearwood Green Metallic, and two turn up on the same day. Metallic Green Bus was running very on time there. <laughs> so there we go. But this is a nice example, as it was played as a tiny bit of very light buckle wear on the back, a few light scratches, but yeah, there's, there it is with the case, and we've got all the tags in the pocket as well, um, and accessory pack. So one for you Johnny Marr fans out there. So this is another lovely American thing, and extremely rare, albeit a little bit battered. 
So this is a Martin 017P Plectrum guitar from the 1920s. From memory, it's 1927. Um, lots of wear on the neck, and we got some repairs on the sides and some repairs on the top as well. But with the original case, so a rare thing. Not necessarily massively valuable because Plectrum guitars aren't aren't the most um, the most popular guitars. They were they were made essentially for banjo players um, that that so they could you know get involved with the whole Martin acoustic thing. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a it's a good I guess uh, rare and fairly historical guitar. So if you if you're looking to find that odd odd thing that you don't see that often for your Martin collection. There is a 1920s Martin 017P. So just finishing with um, consignment updates, things coming in. We've had some really, really nice studio equipment come in for this sale. Um, we've got a lot of high-end microphones. We're not going to spend too much time on this because um, you'll see in the catalogue, but some lovely rack units, lovely um, microphones, but in particular we've got quite a good collection of Neumann microphones. Now we're going to be really careful with these because of the ribbons in them, but this is um, this is one of the ones that people really go for. This is the U47 model, um, sort of a, yeah these are some, some of the best microphones you can get. Um, so that, that with its original case and it's got its power supply as well. Again, we have lots of lots of them coming in. There's one on eBay in worse condition than that one for 20,000. 20,000 for a worse condition one. Um, and then we've got lots of um, lots of different models, but we've got some Bock microphones as well. Um, and various other things, um, AKG Sure. There's another pair of, even though it says Schurfler on the box, there's another pair of Neumann stereo mics there. Um, Wonder Audio. So some really quite lovely things. And there's an SM2 in there. Again, another good Neumann microphone. So do look out for those because our studio section this time is massive. Um, some really good things, um, including this collection of mics and other gear. So that is it for this week. Thanks for tuning in once again. Um, it's been really, really nice, the feedback with um, sort of our regular clients and sort of new clients as well, saying that they've been watching the videos and they are enjoying them. Um, it does mean a lot because um, uh, it is a new thing that we are, are wanting to do and they seem to be going down well, so we will keep doing them. Um, into the future. Um, we do have some demos being filmed next week. So towards the end of the uh, next week and the following week, we will have lots of video playthroughs of some of the um, higher end vintage guitars uh, and other nice pieces, including, I'll mention it again, the 58V. So we'll have a nice, um, nice video there. So do subscribe, do like this video and uh, hit that bell icon as well just so you get notified of those videos. So we'll probably only have one more consignment update before the sale because we will be sort of starting to feature and upload the video playthroughs. Um, and then we are building up to the auction anyway. The catalog at that point will be online and you won't need to see a video of me telling you what's coming in. You'll be able to look at it, you look at it yourselves on the catalog. So we currently have, I think about 1200 lots in stock and we've got more stuff coming in. So we're definitely gonna have over 1200 lots over the four days, 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th of September. Guitars, amps, pedals, spares, studio equipment, memorabilia. Of course, we've got the Bernie Marsden collection as well. Um, so some lovely things coming in. Like I said, please remember to like and subscribe to our channel. Um, and we will see you again next time. <music>